Greetings, my friends from all around the world, uh, from 130-something different countries that tune in for my sermons every weekend and my videos during the week. Uh, this is a very somber sermon. I welcome you all, and I thank God uh, for all of you who follow Jesus Christ with me through my various ministries. You don't follow me, you follow Jesus Christ with me. Thankful for that. And uh, everyone is welcome here to hear this sermon. It doesn't matter what your sexual orientation is, what your religion is, or lack of religion your uh, economic standing, your uh, whether you're male, female, whoever you are, whatever you are, doesn't make any difference. You're all welcome here. Jesus Christ loves you equally, and so do I. I don't take up any offerings, don't accept any money. I never have, never will. Jesus Christ paid the full price on the cross. No need for money. I don't believe that any pastor should be taking money from people. The Apostle Paul made tents to support his ministries. I've got some really heavy stuff in my heart to talk to you about, but before I do, let's have a word of prayer. I love you, Lord Jesus, and I thank you for another chance to be able to reach the, the millions and millions and tens of millions and hundreds of millions around the world you've allowed me to reach over the last 15 years on social media, all for you and all for your glory. I pray that everyone who hears this video uh, and this sermon would find you as Lord and Savior, and that they would come to you uh, if they haven't been. If they are with you, you would strengthen them, encourage them, help them with whatever needs they have, according to your will, asking your precious name. Amen. The title of today's sermon is, I've lost my faith and no longer believe. I've decided I must follow a different path from now on. Let's go to scripture first of all, and then we'll dig into the sermon. 1 Timothy 4, 1, the King James Version Bible. Now the Spirit speaketh expressly, then the latter times some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. <coughs> Hebrews chapter 6, starting with verse 4. For it is impossible for those who were once enlightened and have tasted of the heavenly gift and were made partakers of the Holy Ghost and have tasted the good work of God, the good word of God, and the powers of the world to come, if they shall fall away, to renew them again unto repentance, seeing they crucify to themselves the Son of God afresh, and put him to an open shame. Revelation chapter 2, start with verse 4. Nevertheless, I have somewhat against thee, because thou hast left thy first love. Remember, therefore, from whence thou art fallen, and repent, and do the first works, or else I will come unto thee quickly, and will remove thy candlestick out of his place, except thou repent. 1 Corinthians nine twenty seven. But I keep my body, and bring it into subjection, lest that by any means, when I have preached to others, I myself should be a castaway. Matthew chapter 24, starting at verse 10. And then shall many be offended, and shall betray one another, and shall hate one another, and many false prophets shall rise, and shall deceive many. And because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold, but he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. Romans chapter 11, starting at verse 19. Thou wilt say then, the branches were broken off, that I might be grafted in. Well, because of unbelief they are broken off, and thou standest by faith. Be not high-minded, but fear. For if God spared not the natural branches, take heed, lest he also spare not thee. Behold, therefore, the goodness and severity of God on them which fell, severity but toward thee goodness. If thou continue in his goodness, otherwise thou also shalt be cut off. Second Peter chapter 2, <clears throat> start with verse 20. For if after they have escaped the pollutions of the world, through the knowledge of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, they are again entangled therein and overcome, the latter end is worse with them than the beginning. For it had been better for them not to have, to have known the way of the righteousness than after they have known it, to turn from the holy commandment delivered unto them. But it has happened unto them, according to the word, to, according to the true proverb, the dog is turned to his own vomit again, and the sow that was washed in her wallowing, to her wallowing in the mire. So you can see God's word talking to Christians and telling Christians in no uncertain terms, finish the race until the end, repent of your sins after you're saved, come to Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, don't just sit there like a bump on a log, work for him, pick up your cross, put it over your shoulders and follow him daily, or you will not make it to heaven. That's what the Bible says. And only 20% of Christians in this year, 2021, a new poll, believe the Bible is the actual word of God and should be taken literally. One-fifth of Christians, one in five, believe that at all. So, 
I've lost my faith. I haven't lost my faith in God. <clears throat> no, I haven't lost my mind. I haven't lost my faith in Jesus Christ. I've lost my faith in the Christian church. I'm done with the so-called Christian church. I'm done with pastors. I'm done with watchmen. I'm done with teachers. I'm done with most Christians, period. The thousands that follow Jesus Christ with me in my various ministries, I'm with you until the end. You understand, and those who join us from now on, I'm with you till the end, but I am focused, focused, razor sharp, diamond sharp, on Jesus Christ, on reaching the lost for him, all for him and all for his glory, witnessing and praying, giving free Christian counseling, talking people out of committing suicide. That's it, preaching from the Bible, end times, that's it. I, I don't care about politics, I don't care about world events that don't that, that don't tie into the rapture and the tribulation, I don't care. I'm focused only on Jesus Christ. Pastors and and and, and uh, elders and deacons and, and parishioners should all be ashamed of themselves. I'm going to start with the church itself, with, with the church building. you got pastors who are sleeping with their congregants. you got congregants who are sleeping with each other. you got all kinds of sexual perversion and filth and garbage and wickedness. You've got, you got sermons <coughs> being preached out of fake watered-down versions of the Bible or off of iPads. You've got breakfast buffets, and, you, and you've got bistros and, and, and food bars. Everybody's eating and feeding their face. Stuff in their face while the sermon's going on. You have magic acts. You've got sexual, sexually explicit sermons that are not trying to warn you off sex, trying to encourage you towards it. You've got churches meeting in strip bars, meeting in in, in, in drinking bars, meeting in, 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 in nightclubs. You got you got the church where it's just a filthy, wicked, evil, filthy cesspool and a hellhole. And shame on the pastors, shame on the leaders of the church, shame on the congregants. It's 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 terrible. Ridiculous. You don't know how many people I hear from every day that say, I can't find a good church, Paul. I can't find a good church anywhere in my town. The town I live in is, is one of the most Christian towns, supposedly, in the, in the whole country. I can't find one church here that I trust anymore. I, I, I hear from Christians all the time. They say, oh, Pastor Paul, you got to hear this, um, this, this preacher, my preacher, whatever. And, and I'm so busy. I've got very little time. If I have a chance to hear a snippet, if I, I'll research further. And I find out that this this pastor, he might have been telling the truth and that snippet they gave me, but he's teaching false doctrines on his website. He's he's teaching all kinds of false doctrines. And they they they're blind to it. They can't see. All you hear is, is oh you're the head, not the tail, and 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 um and you hear cheap grace. You never have to repent of your sins after you after you're saved. And you hear, oh, it's a prosperity doctrine, just just serve the Lord and, and give me all your money and the Lord will give you a hundred times more. I'm sick and tired of hearing it. The Lord doesn't guarantee anything to us other than that when we die, unless we're raptured first, if we're saved by Jesus Christ's precious blood, repenting of our sins after we're saved, picking up that cross daily and following him, staying in the word, praying, witnessing to others, then we'll go to heaven. For God's love the world, he gave his only begotten son, whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. The word believeth means it's past, present, and future tense, continues to do the things I told you to do, then you'll go to heaven. That's it. There's, there's nothing else guaranteed. And I'm tired of the Christians sitting around doing nothing. I'm sick and tired of their lazy attitude. Put a video out a couple days ago talking about how 300,000, 300,000, imagine that number, 300,000 Christians were martyred last year. Average of 200,000 the years before, prior to that. They're looking at maybe millions this year. And it was the lowest viewed video that I've done in years because Christians don't care. I do videos on, on, on Christians getting martyred, and they don't care. If it's not their family member, their friend, their close relative or neighbor, they don't care. And I'm tired. I'm tired of the church being so wicked and watered down. And understand, I'm not perfect by any means. I sin, but when I do, I, I sincerely repent. I, 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 I weep. In my, in my soul, in my spirit, and, and beg for forgiveness. That's what the Bible tells us to do. We have to maintain that relationship. There's no cheap grace. There's no free salvation. It's not free. Christ paid the, 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 the price on the cross, yes, but it's not free. We have to continually repent. And that's not works. And, and besides, we're saved by grace alone, yes, but, but it's by works that show if we're truly saved or not. Our fruit is what shows whether we're a dead tree or a fruit-bearing tree. So it all ties in. I'm tired of hearing the church being so watered down and backslidden. I'm tired of hearing the church being so so garbage led and so and, and, and so fake led, being led by the devil. That's why you got Christians who refuse to even to even pray for the new president, President Biden. Yeah, they're angry that Trump is gone, but but they don't they don't respect God. They don't respect God. They don't trust him because God's the one that put President Biden in charge. It was God's idea, God's plan. It's part of God's major plan. We have nothing. We have no idea what it is. 
but you need to be praying for the man, and you need to understand and accept the fact that he is president of the United States. I don't care if you, if you like him or not. I don't care what happens. President Trump did God's, what God put him to do for four years. God raised up leaders, lowers him down. Now you got President Biden. Christians need to start showing the truth. They need to stop hiding, putting their light under under a, a bushel where people can't see it. They need to start getting some salt back in their life. They need to start growing a spine and stop being a spineless, gutless jellyfish. I'm so sick and tired of the church today. I really am. Very few Christians even, even believe Jesus Christ is the only way to heaven anymore. They don't even believe God's, that the Bible's God's in, inerrant word. They believe that the premarital sex is fine, and shacking up is fine, and all the sexual perversions we see nowadays is fine. They even believe abortion is fine. They, they, they believe all these lies, and they call themselves Christians. Christians, you're supposed to be a, a representative of Christ. Christians, Christians, they represent Christ as much as the devil does. I am sick and tired of it. And I rebuke the vast majority of the church today in Jesus' name, and I command you to get behind me, Satan, because you are the devil. You need to fall on your face and repent and turn back to Jesus Christ. Because we're in the last days right now, all throughout the Bible, all the Christians were praying that, man, could we be that, that generation to see what's happening, to see the end times and to be here when the rapture happens. We're that generation right now, and you hear crickets. Christians don't care. They only want to hear things they want to hear. You see videos on puppies and on babies and kids. Oh, millions of views. You see stuff that I put out. Yeah, it still gets a lot of views, but it gets a tiny fraction of the views that it used to get 10, 15 years ago, and it gets a minuscule fraction of the views of all the secular stuff you see all the time. I am so sick and tired of the church, my friends. I am sick and tired. I've lost my faith in the church. I've given up on the church. I've gone my own way now, and I am focused totally on Jesus Christ, the King James Version Bible, and all of you out there, Pick up your King James Version Bible and read it. Whatever I preach, read it and verify. Whatever anyone preaches, read it and verify. Don't take our word for anything, mine or anyone else's. But I'm telling you, I preach the truth. I always have. I always will because as a watchman and pastor, I understand God's word that says I put myself in a much higher a responsibility frame than any than, than, than non-pastors uh, and watchmen. I have to answer to Jesus Christ on Judgment Day for what I preached and what I didn't preach. And I take that very, very seriously. I take all of your hearts and souls and salvation and spirits very seriously. You're my flock. Jesus Christ gave you to me as a flock. There, you, you all belong to Christ, but he gave me as your shepherd to, to, to shepherd you for my master Jesus. And I will keep doing that until I'm raptured or dead, period. But I'm tired of the church. I'm tired of mealy mouth, watered down, weak, garbage dump. Hellhole, festering, cesspool, saltless, godless, toothless, gutless, lifeless, lightless, spineless, jellyfish, Christians. I'm sick of it. You need to look at your own heart. I look at mine. Look at your own heart and, and see who you are. <clears throat> Not who you think you are. Study the word. Go th Remember all the scripture. Listen to the video over and over again and, and, and reread the scripture that I wrote. Let it sink into your hearts and understand you have to find Jesus Christ is Lord and Savior, and continue on with that cross till the very end, or you won't make it to heaven. It's God's word, not mine. I'm not judging you. You judge yourself with your wicked, filthy lifestyle and behavior. I'm disgusted with the vast majority of the church. That's why very few adult Christians who are living will be raptured. Most of the rapture will be the dead in Christ. There'll be tons of those from the old days when they used to believe in Christ and follow him till the very end. Lots of children and probably people who can't take control of themselves because of a mental condition or whatever else. A lot of them, living adult Christians are going to be the minority by far, vast minority in the rapture. And it's uncalled for. It's shameful. And I'm tired of it. I had to get this out, man. I had to get, you can see I had a lot on my chest and I'm tired of it, man. I'm sick of it. The Lord laid this sermon on my heart. You can get mad at me if you want. A lot of people got mad at me when I did the video a couple days ago telling Christians they need to they need to pray for Biden and accept that he's president now. They get mad at me for talking about, again, the martyr. They get mad at me. I don't care. I'm not here to please people. I'm not here to please man or make friends. I love the friends that I have. It's not my job. My job is to keep you from going to hell by pointing you to the cross of Jesus Christ so you can kneel and repent when you sin and live for him night and day. That's my job. I take it very seriously. The rapture is upon us, my friends. If you don't want to be left behind as a backsliding Christian, if you've never known Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, pray the prayer, do the six steps I have in the box, go to video, no one's guaranteed the next day, hour, minute, or second of your life. If you like prayer, contact me. I pray for you every day. I love you all so dearly and deeply with all my heart. Those who follow Christ with me in my various ministries, I love you all. 
May God bless you all and look up True Christians, our redemption draws die. We fly soon. Share this. I'm being censored relentlessly across social media because my faith. I love you dearly. Please take this to heart. Love you.